And I'll never forget, Tom, the time that I first met you. We were in Ireland in a castle. Mm -hmm. You were about to speak and there was a debrief that was happening. And I'll never forget the energy coming off you. And you were sitting there and you were going, excited. And I just remember everyone else going, oh, right. And <laughs> I just knew straight away you were someone that I wanted to speak with because you have that mindset for success and I could tell it right then. So would you please share your story and then how you developed this mindset for success? Yeah, and listen, it also was the most amazing time for me meeting you and everybody else. So, you know, it's reciprocated. Um, my name's Tom Smith. I'm from Ireland. I grew up in Belfast, Northern Ireland. I was born in 1974. And our country was going through a civil war. And I grew up in a cycle of violence, better known as the Troubles. Um, as a young man, my mom used to say to me, where did we get you, son? The movies? Because I was always different. I always wanted things that other people didn't. And even though there was a war going on, I was a dreamer. And I'd said that to you. I used to sit in the garden and look at the clouds and dream. So, you know, if, if I looked at it now as a mindset and a, and a mentor, I had vision at the age of 10. Um, I got my first job. I became a young contractor. And I just, I've always had that drive and energy. You know, since then, I've been a property developer. I've owned a hotel business. I've been a TED speaker. I'm associated with Grant Cardone, the American billionaire. I've wrote books. I've acted in movies. And every day waking up is like an adventure. You know, I just, I love life. Two years ago, I had a spiritual awakening and God stepped into my life. Or in fact, he's always been there. I stepped into his presence. Um, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm in recovery. AA is my life. It's my job to help other people. Um, I'm a mentor. I've been a mindset coach for one of the UFC fighters. I'm one of the lead sales trainers in the UK. I'm the head sales trainer for Securitas, the biggest security company in the world. And I just love life. I absolutely love it. Love it. So, Tom, how would you go from working and in, in, uh, putting on roofs, building houses in, in Belfast and seeing what you saw in those times? Can you take us, can you take us there for a moment? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, growing up in the Troubles, our abnormal life had became normal. You know, my mum and dad used to watch the news in the morning, but it wasn't because they were interested in the media. It was because we wanted to find out where the latest bomb had went off or where the latest murder had happened. So my mum and dad could safely navigate us going to school or going to work. Um, you know, you would have had a conversation in the street. Somebody would have said, did you hear about John? No, what happened? He was shot last night. Is he okay? No, he's dead. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. What are you doing at the weekend? People were forgot about in two seconds flat. You know, death, terror had became normal. People being murdered was normal in this whole scheme of what was going on. Both communities were killing each other sometimes multiple times on a daily basis, you know, and even myself, you know, I, I got an amazing opportunity as a young man, as a contractor, to earn more money than anybody else. And say 1992, somebody asked me, would you like to earn a thing called danger money? I'm like, what's danger money? Well, you have to work for the security forces. So you start working on army bases and police stations, but we pay you three or four times the normal daily rate. And I went, of course I'll do it. Um, I remember one time working on the police forensic lab and the policeman came running out, get off the roof. And we're all like, what's wrong? And he says, we've had intelligence. There's a sniper in the forest, get off the roof. So we all get down. What did we do next? We had our lunch. We seen the helicopter going over to the forest. We seen the army and police going to the forest to, to find this sniper. He had obviously gone. And my guys asked me, Tom, what are we going to do next? I said, guys, we're going to go up and finish this roof. Because our abnormal life just became normal. But it also made me very, very resilient and very strong. Um, 
And then in 1994, the most amazing thing happened on the planet for us. Our country found peace. And now we have this most beautiful country where our community leaders still do an amazing job keeping that peace. But for the first time in over 30 years, the murders stopped. And I'm so proud of our country and I'm so proud of both sides of the community. And so can you tell me in 1994, when this happened, was there a mindset flip? Like how, how did you cope with going from that world to this world? I Even going through working in a war, I still wanted the big things in life. And although people's vision was clouded by terror on the streets and a war and, you know, murder, I, I just knew I was destined to do something. Um, I got involved in the property game. It completely, massively took off. I bought my first house in 1994. Um, my friends were all laughing at me as a young man. You're buying a house. But when both sides called a ceasefire, my house tripled in price. So then the next thing, everybody started calling me lucky. And I said, it's not luck. It's when hard work meets opportunity. I was in the right place at the right time. I started buying houses, flipping houses, selling houses. And I just, my whole life, well, our whole world changed in Northern Ireland. But then for the first time, our country found prosperity. And things all started to happen, you know. So it's it's been a whirlwind. Wow. You know, it's funny when you heard that word lucky and like people say, oh, Kath, you know, travelled around the world, spoken on seven continents, and they go, gee, you're lucky. And I, I think the same thing too with luck. It's labour under correct knowledge. You worked really hard. You saved your money. You bought at the right time. Yes, sometimes there are great opportunities in front of us, but we don't take them. But I think mm -hmm. having that mindset does help you step forward to take those opportunities, you know. I believe that to have that positive mindset, we have to take positive action. And that's what makes makes the difference. So did you always have this great mindset or when did you feel that it changed? Did you do any study yeah, or I've research? Al I've always had this and say where I can take emotion out of something. So say I need to speak to Catherine Malloy and it's 47 times I've called you in the same day. I'm not going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be okay with a follow-up because in my head, all I want to do is bring a business deal to the table that works really well for the two of us. So, you know, I know so many people that are like, I would say, did you call that guy or did you call the lady back? Yeah, I spoke, I tried to get her a week ago and you're like, what? You know, when you've got the right mindset, you know, I believe when I look up the definition of juggernaut, it's an unstoppable force. You have to have that in your mindset that no matter what's going to happen, I'm going through this, whether it's follow-up phone calls. You know, it's the big one for me is the more hands you shake, the more calls you make, the more money you make. And that's all about mindset too. You know, and I, I always, not, I don't let myself get tired either. I just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. You know, mindset isn't a cliche. It's everything. It's everything. It's that self-talk. But what do you say to yourself every day to make a difference? So I changed my entire life by every morning. I write a mantra. So I put I put armor on every day. And, and I started off like this. I am a warrior of Jesus Christ. I am a sober man. I am a sober man. I repeat it. I then write, I am a total success and positivity magnet. I am a huge money and vast wealth magnet. I am the most amazing husband to my beautiful wife, Dolores. And it's everything after I am. So sitting in the mornings, I put armor on and I put my helmet on to protect my thinking. So I prime my thinking for the day because our self-talk can lie to you so much. You can't do this. You're not good enough. Well, I've, I've surpassed that. I prime myself through my mantra. So if somebody was to read it, they would say, who is this guy? It's me. And then I'm ready to take on the world. And if I feel any way knocked off the, the ledge, I will rewrite it. I also have it taped on my phone and I'll play it in the car. 
I'm praying myself before I turn up for a meeting. And that's how I deal with any negativity or any negative self-talk. I do not allow it to come in. Wow, Tom. And look, I'm in big agreement with you that we do need to put that armor on. People are always going to be saying what they want to say. And mm. it's none of our business. As long as we're doing what we need to do. And so many people say, oh, Kathy, yeah, it doesn't matter. I've got enough. I don't need to earn. But you know what? If you do, just maybe you might be able to even help more people in the world than you could oh. ever imagine. Catherine, hey, I, can't, talk about I can't believe you just said that because at the minute I'm praying to God for a huge successful deal to go through. But part of me wanting to get this through is so I can fly to Africa and build whales in, in the Ivory Coast and do things like that. It's not about the money. It's about the difference it can make in somebody else's life. That's what it's about. And, you know, I, I believe going back to the self-talk thing, you have to be your own biggest fan or your own biggest cheerleader. Because if you're listening to something negative going on in your head, you're, you are beat before you start. Do you ever have any words come into your head? And by the way, thank you for helping the women in Africa that we're working with uh, build their piggeries and get some pigs. So it, it saves children. It, it allows them to go to school for a year. It lets them buy plots of land. It's just a, a amazing currency. So, so thank you. There is so much to do. Um, I loved hearing that. But do you ever get that voice in your head that says something then you then do you say to it, get out, come on, Tom, I can do it. What do you say? Well, you know, yesterday was a prime example. I'm in the middle of a deal at the minute in the dental world that will change the face of the dental market. And I'm dealing with a, a huge businessman in America. And I'd called him like six times yesterday on his PA. And my brain went, do you think that's enough? And as soon as my brain said it, I then called another four times because I completely ignored it. So whatever it says to me, I will do the opposite. Last night, I came into my apartment. I had a, I had a challenging but successful day. I'm a, I sat on the sofa and I went, oh my goodness, this is great. And instantly my brain says, get your ass to the gym now. And I went to the gym for the second time. So I'll always do the opposite of it. There is times that I can close it down for maybe, like, maybe a few months and it won't come back out, the negative self-talk. But I believe, like Emma Weaver and Karen Weaver, we both are friends with. Emma Weaver is one of the top mental health specialists in the UK and Ireland. She says to me, the mantra is the biggest tool and strength that she's ever felt. See, when you write about that amazing woman or amazing man, it defeats negative thinking. Hi, I'm Kath Malloy. I'm an author, speaker, and trainer. And I'm here today just to let you know about The Million Dollar Handshake. So this book came out by Hachette in 2018. And very quickly, it made it to the Business Book of the Year in UK for Seven Dials and Orion Books. Actually, um, they, they published Harry Potter. They picked it up and they bought the international rights. And since then, it's been released in uh, different languages. So this is for Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau. Uh, this is in Vietnam. A girlfriend walked past the bookshop and she said, Kath, your book's there. So they bought the international rights as well. And we're so excited because we're going over to work there in 2024 in Vietnam. And of course, we've got the wonderful Australian version that was put out by Hachette Australia and New Zealand. So we react before we speak. And this is one of the biggest problems that we have in business and in life today. And so this book is helping actually work out how we can stop that miscommunication, how we can be more present in the situations and how we can create more win-wins in our life. We've even got this little tiny uh, Indian version because it's nice and light for the back books, for the um, backpacks. So. If you would like to create more win-wins in your life, then we would love you to pick up a copy of The Million Dollar Handshake too. Speak soon. Absolutely, totally agree. And I think this is why I just loved you immediately because I could see the same thing, like you are doing the same things. But I want to take you back to the time where you said 
that's you were an alcoholic. Yeah. Because something must have been going on. Mm. Something must have been going on to let in this talk that thought it was okay for you. Well, what, what happened? Can you share with us, please? Yeah, just to be very point blank, and I just got a feeling of pain there. I drank to take pain away, and I have no idea what the pain is or what it was, but it was it was nearly like unbearable. And you know, I I would have drunk nearly a fishbowl of champagne or a huge vodka, like I'm talking quadruple vodka, you know, and instantly the pain would have left. Um, and then it got to the point where alcohol wasn't serving me at anymore. In fact, the pain it was taking away, alcohol was also bringing so much pain. And then when I look at me, a fit man who's so into fitness and into loving his wife and kids, when I looked in the mirror, I didn't even like the person it was turning me into. Um, I went to AA. I thought, AA, this isn't for me. They're all crazy. I was probably the craziest person in the world in the AA meeting. Um, and now I'm on this journey of recovery. I love going to AA. It's my life. It's my job to help fellow alcoholics in recovery. You know, I touch base with my, my fellow alcoholics who are so close friends, yet strangers in our own way. Um, every single day, because you know something, Catherine? I have a disease that tells me I don't have a disease. I have a disease that tells me I don't have that disease. Try and figure that one out. Um, yeah. And what people say about accountability, accountability for me is going to Miami to do a huge deal with Grant Cardone and Brandon Dawson and going to AA in Miami with the most amazing people and holding each other's hands and saying the Lord's Prayer. That's what recovery is. You can't, you can't think for one second that you've got it because you never have it. And I am really proud to be a recovering alcoholic and I love my sober life. And I would not take a drink for 200 million pound. I have never been more happier inside, spiritually, fitness, happy wife, happy life. It's just, it, I am living the life of my wildest dreams sober because everything else is bullshit. Yeah, Tom, at the moment, um, my husband and I are doing liver cleanse. Now, I'm a social drinker. I love to have a champagne, you know, socially, but I don't sit at home and drink. And, you know, I feel that sometimes, well, my husband would have a drink every night and one drink might land into two drinks. And then he was, you know, he always had something sore and niggly. Anyway, three weeks now without a drink, he's jumping out of bed going, I don't have any aches or pains so if any of you out there are listening and you do feel a little bit sluggish the next day, just remember that alcohol is a poison in our system. And it's really cool yeah. now because we can get non-alcoholic champagne and wines for those that aren't in AA. We know you don't even want to be in that situation. Oh. But oh, there's, yeah. there's so much more out there. And I was just recently out and it used to annoy me. Because you go out and, you know, you're having a champagne. Someone said, no, I don't drink or no, I don't want to drink. And I used to feel, gee, you know, we're, we're in a social thing. It'd be great if you had a drink with us. And then I started to realize I wanted to be that person, the person yeah. that didn't want to have a drink, that yeah. actually woke up the next day and went straight to gym. So it, mm -hmm. really does, it really does affect your life. And it's part of a mindset. It gets in. There's something in there oh, going, yeah. oh, you know. I I equally feel super strong. Like I, I, recently I was in Miami. I was standing, talking to Whitecliff John, the rapper. The whole party was about to go off. The place was flooding with people. I had been there for the first 15 minutes before the music started. It was going to be the most amazing party in Miami. I walked through the crowd. I bumped into Mr. Grant Cardone. I got my photograph taken with Grant because obviously we're working together now. He, done, he did an event for me in Poland. I went to bed. I finished my Coke Zero. I read the Bible and went and went into a lovely deep sleep. I got up at 4 a.m. Miami so I could work two time zones, UK and US. I was in the gym for 5.30 and trained for 90 minutes. And then I watched the sun come up at 10 past seven with a pastor who had met called Mark, 
the two of us stand and watching the sun come up on the beach in Miami. Now, the guy who I used to be drinking would probably still be in Miami because as soon as I have the first drink, all bats are off. Wow. And that's that's the truth of it all, isn't it? And so yeah. you have such a strong mindset, you know, and I think this is for all of us, that it is so easy to create a bad habit. I don't know why it's so easy, whereas it takes a lot of work to create a good habit, but it is really, really worth it for our mindset it once we can it. break. It's, so worth it. it's amazing. Once we can break that. So, Tom. You know, you know, the, you know the thing that happened for me, Catherine? I thought it's time to grow up. Like I turned 50 years old, grow up, grow up. I, I love that. And look, there's nothing wrong with being um young in spirit and mind, but yes, we're adults and we have children. Whether you think you're a leader or not, there is always someone watching you and someone that is going to follow you and, you know, what do you want to leave them with? And this is how we create the strong mindset. You know, I always Talk, call it mental wealth, um, creating that wealthy mindset. And once yeah. we create that, it comes through in our energy language, it comes through in our body language, it comes through in the words we speak. Because I truly believe the quality of your words determines the quality of your life. So we're talking right now, creating that positive mindset for success. Just think about it. Quality of the words determine the quality of your life. So even those words that are coming into your head, even before you speak something, get rid of them. Tell them to get out of there. I know I, even I during the day. Say, change your words, change your world. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Your language is everything, even the unspoken language, just the language that's coming through here. Your body language will change the way that you feel. If you're feeling tired, guess what? Look up, put your shoulders back and put yeah. a big smile on your face. It can change everything. Yeah. So before we go, Tom, I do have a little dice throw where you get to choose a number and I'm going to ask you oh. a random question, but is there anything else that you would like to uh, tell us about developing that strong mindset for success? Well, yeah, you know, it, it's it's the same as going to the gym. Like, I'm a mentor and a coach. You know, I've coached UFC stars. I've, co I've coached movie directors. My business is called Dream Mentor. And, you know, I coach people globally. But it's just like going to the gym. Your mindset and your confidence needs work every single day. If you think you're going to turn up this unique human being that can do a podcast, act in a movie, or go to a, a life-changing meeting, you can't turn up for these, the best version of yourself, unless you're working on yourself every single day. And here's the thing. You should be able to work on yourself one hour a day of 168 hours in a week. You need to be loving yourself enough to work on yourself for one hour a day to make yourself better on a daily basis. I love that. How about that, everybody? One hour a day to work on yourself. And even when those thoughts come in, that's a time for a quick reflection and to get them out. Because Can I give you a true. quick analogy? Can I give you a quick analogy? Yes. When a negative thought comes into my head, this happened to me about five years ago. I see the thought coming in and I flick it out like a pinball machine because if it isn't paying rent or even if it wants to pay rent, it's not allowed in. Absolutely, 100%. I actually talk out loud to myself and I go, come on, Kath. I will just ignore it and just come on, Kath. Keep going with 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 what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're doing to make a difference, even when it feels like you're going through mud sometimes. Yeah. You will come out clean. All right. So are you ready? Do you want the white dice or the red dice? Red. Why red, Tom? I don't know. I just felt attracted to it. It's fast, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Here you go. Oh, number two. Let's have a look at what number two says. Okay, this is interesting. How does embracing failure shape a successful mindset? I I'm not a big fan, but I'm also not its enemy. Failure is part of success. Failure isn't success as enemy. Failure is part of the process. We fail our way to success. 
growing up and being in school, I've heard teachers and stuff. I remember a teacher says to me, you're not going to be anything, Mr. Smith. Is that right? We will, you know, I write in my mantra, I am constantly evolving and becoming the best version of me, which means I'm a man that makes mistakes every day, but I keep learning from them. So long story short, failure is part of the process. It is not a negative thing. Embrace your failures. They will be the building blocks and foundations of your success. Thank you so much for those wise words. There's no losing, there's only learning, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So just as we're leaving today, I'm going to pop out a card from You Matter and see what message we have for our audience. You have an inner light, a special glow that no one else has. I love that because we are all so unique. There is only one of a kind of us on the planet. My dear, in closing today, keep smiling, stay positive. Until next time, speak soon. Thank you so much, Coffin. Thank you so much.